In the world of Dungeons and Dragons, every adventure is a high stakes gamble, where danger lurks around every corner and death is always a looming threat. But for those brave enough to embrace the call of adventure, the rewards can be unimaginable. Wealth beyond measure, fame that echoes through the ages, and the power to shape the very course of history. Yet even the most daring and fearless adventurers cannot be in constant motion. There are always times where they must rest, regroup, and prepare for the next adventure. This is where the concept of downtimes comes into play, a vital part of an adventurous career that is often overlooked. In today's video, we'll be exploring the hidden depths of downtimes and discovering what players can and should be doing in between adventures, from crafting powerful magical items to building their own stronghold, from training new skills to making connections with powerful allies. There are countless ways for adventurers to make the most of their downtime and become even more formidable than before. In my campaigns, you can complete these downtimes by doing mini games with skill checks. I use the list of downtime activities from Xanathar's Guide with a few that I've added in as inspiration. These activities are easy to set up and work with any D20 system and I enjoy using them because it allows my players to invest more deeply into their characters and develop them further. I allow my players to learn new weapon proficiencies which their class may not automatically allow them to know which is especially useful because Martial classes in my campaign aren't proficient with all martial weapons as default as they would be in Raw 5e. Instead, my players can choose a few different types of weapons to start off with, like one-handed swords, two-handed axes, bows, crossbows, spears, etc. This is one of the various interesting rules I have in my homebrew rule set, which is available at my Patreon if you guys want to check it out. The link is in the description. <laughs> But without getting uh, sidetracked anymore, let's explore how players can make the most of their downtimes. Here's a list of the downtime activities that I allow, with carousing, pit fighting, research it, and training probably being by far the most picked options. This list really covers everything and anything your players would want to do. In order to perform their downtimes, decide the nature of it first, how many weeks it's going to take, and how many checks they're going to need to do and also what they're going to need to invest into it to attempt it, like, you know, gold, etc. Finally, set a benchmark for what they will gain if they succeed. As is very typical from my channel, I will provide you guys some examples to help you guys understand the way that I do it, which might help some of you guys formulate your own ideas. The first is going to be carousing. Players need to invest... Uh, 10, 50, or 250 gold, depending on the class of people that they would like to carouse with. Roll a persuasion check and consult the table to determine what happens. Uh, 10 would be like lower, 50 would be middle, and then 250g would be your like, upper class folk. The table's pretty simple. It speaks about different type, you know, contacts that you can get. You can have a hostile contact, or you can get up to three allied contacts. With this system, sometimes I'll swap out a, a contact for a, a rumor or a favor. Um, and, you know, if a player is, for example, carousing at a noble's court, perhaps the player discovers some valuable information about the noble which the party could exploit if they wish. I don't usually overthink who the contacts are. It's easy to consider the types of people who would be working at a noble's court servants, retainers, extended family. Look at a name of lists that's appropriate for your campaign's culture, pick some names, give them a couple of sentences of backstory, and come up with the way that they became a contact, you know, a contact, really. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Remember, guys, you're only limited by your own creativity when it comes to creating this stuff. My second example will be bounty hunting. It's a little bit more complex, and I think it's a downtime many players, especially warrior types, would be very interested in. Players must invest at least 25g gathering information and hunting down the bounty. For every additional 25g they spend, they gain a plus one bonus to the roll that they do, or rolls that they do, to resolve this activity to a maximum of plus five. 
The DM will need to set a DC for this challenge, ranging from 10 to 25 based on the difficulty rating to bring this outlaw in. If they are kind of a basic petty criminal, maybe it's DC 10. If they are the bandit kingpin, then obviously it's DC 25. The player must roll three skill checks uh, chosen by the dungeon master that represent the type of work that they're going to be putting in in order to find the bounty. Typical checks are stealth, investigation, and attack roll, but you could swap out these checks with other checks like athletics, acrobatics, insight, perception, whatever really floats your boat, guys. Consult the chart um, that it is on the, as it is on the screen based on the amount of successes that your players have. And as you guys can see, it ranges from the bounty escapes and the resources are wasted all the way to free where players get a lot of money. They actually get 1.5 times uh, what they should be getting. They get like the full listed gold value plus an additional half, which is just really, really good. How much you want this to be is really up to you, but I obviously always scale rewards based on the party's level. So if the party's like between level 1 and 3, I'd probably have the reward be like 50 gold or 100 gold. It doesn't need to be crazy. But for those really, like the Bandit King or something like that, it could be 1,000 gold, right? Um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if I'd, I'd allow a Bandit King to be done in a downtime. I feel like that sounds more like a proper adventure. But you see my point, right? Moving on to training skills. When players succeed at activities to train up a proficiency... I will give them a point or two per week of successful training. The players are aiming to reach a target number, which is between 10 and 30, depending on the difficulty to attain that proficiency. Some proficiencies are easier to learn than others. For example, I think learning to use a crossbow would be easier than learning to use a longbow, based on historical records at least. You know, I'm an Englishman myself and a keen scholar, and I'm pretty aware of the kind of methodical training that was put into young men in England um, in order to make them into longbowmen. For crossbows I imagine it would be a lot easier I'd say 12 points and for longbows I'd say 24 points so almost double yeah exactly double actually yeah. Moving on downtimes can be more than just learning new skills gaining influence and wealth it can also be an opportunity to build something of your own something that will endure beyond an individual quest or battle a stronghold. A stronghold is a base of operations that the party can use for their own benefit. It could be a castle, a keep, a temple, or any other type of fortified structure. Building a stronghold can be a long and expensive process, but the benefits are significant. A stronghold can provide a safe place to rest, store treasure, and plan future adventures. It can also be a source of income, a hub of political power, and a symbol of the party's prestige and influence. Returning to Strongholds, there are several resources available to help players build Strongholds in their D&D campaigns. One of the best is Downtime and Demenses by Courtney C. Campbell. This book provides a comprehensive set of rules for building Strongholds, including rules for construction, running hirelings, giving out punishments for crimes, and leading expeditions, amongst other things. Another valuable resource is Strongholds and Followers by Matt Colville. This book provides rules for creating strongholds that offer unique abilities to the party, as well as rules for managing retainers and followers who can develop the stronghold further. I really like the tables for retainers and followers, but a lot of them are too high fantasy for me. Making a low fantasy alternative will be one of my focuses for this year, but obviously that's going to be a little bit later on. The Beckby rules for building strongholds and controlling land is also worth checking out. These rules originally published in the basic Dungeons & Dragons set provide a simple and easy to use framework for managing a stronghold and its inhabitants. And I think it's how I'm going to probably be running it at the base level for my campaign. As I, just, I like the, the family structure. Each family gives you a certain amount of money. I just, I just like it. I think it's good. And I am very keen on doing a deeper dive into Stronghold creation, and I imagine that's something that a lot of you are probably interested in, but I think I'll cover that in a future video. Just make sure you guys are subscribed and put the notifications on so you'll be alerted when that video and many of my other videos go live. Obviously, let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the video and what downtimes, if any, you've done as a Dungeon Master or player in your time. Thanks for watching, guys. 
I'll see you next time on Loki's Lair. Until then.